success. Bang, bang, boomerang. Yeah, man, we have a special interview here today, man. We have the brilliant, genius yes. songwriter, Melanie Fontana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys know she's wrote for everybody. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Almost everybody at this point, right? You would say so. It kind of feel it feels like it. I feel like I'm living like some sort of alternate reality. Like I can't believe that this is my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. I, I could I couldn't imagine, man. So uh we're gonna start off with Bang Bang. Yes. Um got a hard hitting question for you. <laughs> uh, so my number one question for you, something I'm very curious about. Uh, what is your spirit animal? Um I ask that because we all have spirit animals here at TRC. <laughs> I think I'm a T-Rex, but people call me a, a teddy bear. <laughs> so I want to, <laughs> I want to ask you that oh, question. I see, I see the teddy bear. Oh. <laughs> I feel it. Yeah. My spirit animal. I mean, uh, you you guys met my cat a little earlier. <laughs> I feel like my spirit animal is a cat. I'm loving when I want to be loving, and when I need attention, I will not stop until I get it. But when I don't want to be around people, you will not see me for a while. <laughs> that's good. That's what's up. <laughs> that's actually pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the reason why I don't have a cat because they don't act like they need you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta work for it. It's like a real relationship. Oh, that's tough. That's that tough. makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I like fish. <laughs> Okay, so I had a question. So um, I was curious to, uh, like, what influenced you to get into songwriting? Do you remember, like, what song it was and what artist it was that said, you know what, I want to do that? Mm. Yeah, I remember exactly what artist it was. Um, it, uh, it's not necessarily the artist herself, but it's mm. the people around her. When I first started listening to Britney Spears, oh. Oh, wow. I would go into her album booklet and see who was producing all of her stuff. Mm -hmm. And I would look at the names and I would do my research. And I wanted to write pop songs that sounded like Britney Spears or Mariah Carey or Whitney Houston. So whenever I would get the new CD, I'd go right into the album booklet, start looking through the names. And I really just started admiring the people behind the scenes. I think like one of the first people uh, I ever really wanted to write for or write with mm -hmm. in one way or another was Britney. Mm. That's dope. And and you did. work with Britney, yeah. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> That's super dope. So yeah, like you you had like an extensive resume when it comes to writing for different genres. So I was just wondering, like, you know, K-pop music is known for its dynamic use of multiple styles in like one record. Mm -hmm. So does that approach make it easier or difficult for you to write to it? I don't think it necessarily makes it easier or more difficult. It's just a little different than when you're writing for somebody like straight up in the West. You just know it actually kind of gives you a little more creative freedom, K-pop does. It, you just can go a little more crazy. Yeah. You can sort of give your best, craziest melodies mm -hmm. and not feel like, wow, that might be too intricate because K-pop is all about dynamics. They mm. want the crazy, but then they want the chill. Yeah. And then they want the dance break. So you kind of have to think, all right, how can I make, the second verse that's similar to the first verse, but slightly different. So it gives like a new flavor. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. So technically you could say it's harder, but that's not the word I would use or just be, it's just a little more in depth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's dope. Uh, my question is, um, my, my job is like, it's like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but with <laughs> such a, <laughs> but with such an all amazing right. career, um, I want to ask you like, what is the favorite, I guess your favorite thing about what you do for a living? Oh my gosh, my favorite thing about what I do for a living. Seeing the fan uh, reaction to a song that I collaborated on, like seeing mm. the tweets, like seeing how it's affected people, uh, seeing how in, in like a, a positive way, hopefully, yeah. seeing how it has maybe changed someone's opinion about an artist or made someone just have a better day. For me, it's the reaction that I'm 
uh, the positive reaction, I should say. Yeah. Okay, okay, nice. So, there's negative ones. Negative <laughs> ones I've had in the past. So, uh, do you have a like routine when you get in the studio? Do you have to wear your lucky socks? Do you mm. have to put on a specific <laughs> scented candle? Do you have yeah. to have like a glass of wine? Like, is there a specific routine that you have to get into? Depending on the time of day. Depending on the time of day. Yes. So I just love if I'm working from home, <clears throat> I have a really nice coffee maker. Not gonna lie. Oh. <laughs> I need to have a cup of coffee in my hand and my phone because that's where I write all my lyrics. I'm not a traditional writer where I write in a notebook or like I write on an iPad. I write on my phone. Like I just have I use this program called Evernote. Mm, they back your stuff up to their their cloud. I trust it more than I trust iCloud, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a password. It's like it's really protected. Can't find my concepts. I get my cup of coffee. I go in there with my phone. I have a studio here in my house. We converted our garage into a full like professional studio. Nice. Mm-hmm. And I need to have my coffee. And then if it's at night or we're just chilling, I want like a nice glass of red wine, like a Merlot or like a Tempranillo or something. Mm. <laughs> nice. A tempranillo. Oh, wow. <laughs> I just like, I, I, I need to like, I, I have like a, a fixation with like having a drink while I'm working. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, since writing for the K-pop industry, has um, your writing process changed or evolved at all? Like how you're, like yeah. how you approach to how you write for even artists over here in the West or anything like that. Has that changed? Yeah, um, for sure. Actually. I have really started because in um, when I'm writing with Korean artists, I know most of my lyrics are probably going to go away. They're going to translate it into Korean or they're going to re-lyric it totally okay. into Korean, so it's been a totally different concept or title. Uh, so I have really started focusing on melodies first. Okay. If the melody uh. doesn't feel right, I won't even go forward with the lyric. I like to have an idea of what I'm writing about. Yes, I do need an idea of like the mood of the song. So maybe a title in my head. Okay. But if that melody isn't right, then I don't want to move forward because that's what people remember. A lot of times people can't remember the words, but that is so you true. Remember the that melody. is so true. Yeah. The songs I, I listen to, I just remember the melody. Melodies, yeah. 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 <laughs> See? So for me, yes, I am very proud and very, um, I'm very proud of my words and my lyrics. But I really started putting a focus on those melodies because I realized that's what drives these collaborations I'm doing are right. the melodies. Yeah. And music is powerful. Um, the question yeah. I have for you, um, uh, can you like, can you like tell a hit song as you're writing it? Like sometimes I will think that like I've done a song before where I, I thought I can write, it wasn't good. And I knew it wasn't a hit. <laughs> <laughs> is it is there a way that you kind of like when you're writing these things out like oh yeah this is it this is a this is a keeper maybe some people have those moments where they're like this is a hit but i always just write to please myself first hmm. um so i can't i can't necessarily be like oh this is a hit i never know uh sometimes sometimes i'm writing a song and i'm like this is a great song cool yes i love it i would buy this i would download this i would stream this but i never really know it's going to be a hit you know okay yeah. right yeah, I, that's I, I, for the people to decide this yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> i kind of have a question that piggybacks off piggybacks well, off of what you said but, but not to cut you off but mm. like i have hard drive hits mm-hmm. like i have songs that i think are so amazing that have just not been placed with an artist yet mm-hmm. or that have just like gone across the table of an artist and they pass on it mm-hmm. and i'm just like why and then mm-hmm. i have songs that i'm like that's a B plus in my opinion. That's <laughs> gone. Mm, to major artists, and I'm just like, oh. okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know what a hit is. No, Clearly, no. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I know that feeling a hundred percent. I have a kind of question to piggyback off of what he said. So, uh, is there a song that you've written that you kind of like, man, like that song? I wish people would actually go back and listen to it again. Yes. Mm. Yes. Um, this uh, song, it's kind of an underrated song by the Chainsmokers that I co-wrote uh, mm-hmm. called Setting Fires. It did really well, but I feel like it could have, it should have been bigger. Mm-hmm. It should have mm-hmm. been a bigger song, you know? Yeah, did, so do you think it was like the people weren't catching on to the lyrics or it just, or make, because no, I know. I'll tell you what, 
it was closer mm-hmm. by the chain smokers came out right before oh. so closer baby pull me closer yeah, yeah. 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 that's a great <laughs> song <laughs> How can you compete when that blew up at radio the way yeah. it did? Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I feel like Setting Fires is one of those songs that could be covered by somebody or could be sampled. Mm. You know, I've always... And then another one I wrote uh, is the very first like major cut I ever had, believe it or not, uh, was with Justin Bieber mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on his mm-hmm. Christmas album mm. featuring a country band called The Band Perry. And we wrote a song called Home This Christmas. Mm-hmm. And I'm like... Yo, Carrie Underwood could take this like that, or like even Casey Musgraves could cover it. It's like a beautiful country Christmas song. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it didn't blow up the way I know it could have. It's a Christmas (laughs) song. Cover it. Yeah. I want want my next, I want my, I want my chestnuts roasting on an open fire. (laughs) You want that Mariah Carey royalty money that all I want for Christmas royalty money. Yes. I mean, we can all dream. We can all. <laughs> if you imagine every year just getting like millions of dollars dumped in your yeah. bank account of, through royalties, just doing, you, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to lift a finger. It just happens to you. It's just like an avalanche of money. <laughs> I think they said, like, doesn't Mariah make almost 20 million a year just off of that song? Yep, I think? she could live off that song. I, yeah, stress. <laughs> she could, if she, if she, I, and, and I love Mariah Carey so much. She was one of my, like, first inspirations as a singer. Mm-hmm. So, to me, I, I mean, nobody deserves it more than Mariah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, she's um, worked as a four, she's been a, she's had, like, number ones in, like, four decades or something crazy like this that. That's crazy. Yeah, it's insane. That's really wild. Yeah. So you've had the opportunity to write for Korean solo and um, group X. So um, yes. how how does that come when you write? Like, is one more difficult than the other when you're trying to write for a single, a solo artist or a group artist? Like, is there any kind of difficulty when it comes to that? Because I know with a group, you probably have to deal with a lot more um, personas Hearts. and everything like that. So yeah. how how does that differ? Uh, you know, weirdly, it doesn't differ that much. Uh, what I love so much about the K-pop world is people are very, artists are very open to taking different styles of songs. It's not like in the West where if you write a song, it sounds like a Dua Lipa song or that sounds like a Katy Perry song. In Korea, artists have a much more broad spectrum of what they do as artists. Okay. So right. like you'll see a BTS video where they're like straight up like, Hip hop, rap, and then you'll see another one where they're like serenading on a mountaintop wearing all white, like boys and men style. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like writing for a solo artist. You could be writing in your mind for a solo artist, and then you get an email like two days later, like, oh, this group G Idol wants to take it. And you're like, I had a male (laughs) solo artist in mind when I wrote that. Right. K pop is always a surprise. So, no, it there's really no difference okay. for me but here and there like you'll be like oh like if i'm writing for this band let me think about this member and what he would do at that part mm-hmm. but in the end that song could end up somewhere totally different wow. like it always is shocking in gotcha. a good way yeah, that, that was a really good question um uh, feel bad for asking one. this one <laughs> um <laughs> oh, God. Uh, do you have a favorite song to cling to we all talk about cleaning music uh, within the podcast, and I wonder, oh, yeah. like, do you have like a cleaning song? <laughs> oh yes, uh, there was one song by this artist, Jax Jones. I think it's "You Don't Know Me" is the, is the title. You don't know me, it's like, fuck yeah, it's this. A r- okay, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I know that one. <laughs> I don't think you know me. Think you know me? Nah, nah. Yeah. Don't act like you know me, like you know me, I'm not. Okay, I can see you back back human today, you know? (laughs) That's cool. Or work by Rihanna. Okay, that's a good one right there. (laughs) That's good, that's good. (laughs) Definitely appropriate. Yes, yes. I think she says dirt a couple times in there, too. Yeah, I honestly (laughs) have no clue. I don't know either. I I don't know. I want to know if she knows. If she said, I'm pretty sure she does. So. Uh, I don't know, but she does say at one point, nobody texts me in a crisis. And I'm like, do you want someone to text you in a crisis? 
Yeah. So uh, I had a question. I know you um, co-write with your uh, your bu- your husband, right, from time to time. Mm-hmm. Dope. Is yeah. there any beef ever when you're writing the lyrics? Absolutely. Like, That's are y'all like, question. you're like, no, that line doesn't work right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Weirdly, and you guys are going to think I'm lying. No, we nice. never, ever disagree in the studio. Oh, okay. Ever. Okay. That's cool. It's, That's cool. It's, like, it's, it's just like my writing soulmate and life soulmate. We mm-hmm. met writing. And we loved working together so much, and then it kind of like turned flirty. Okay. So, you know what I mean? It yeah. was like we started out like writing together really well, and then it sort of blossomed into a romance. But actually, like me, like just like hitting him up on Snapchat with like a little like side boob. Like, <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> okay. that's actually really good. Sneak it in. Sneak it in the side boob. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> we don't no i swear to god like we really don't like if he is like well i don't like that he's usually right and if i'm like mm, i don't like that i'm usually right because i trust him and he trusts me we both trust each other's methods so much that's dope that's yeah. dope that's really dope yeah we, we we're we're great together in the studio i highly recommend writing with us <laughs> cool, cool. Cool. so as you know we, we're we're big fans of bts and everything like that um, we're big fans of Big Hit, and you know we came. Uh, we've really taken a fondling to TXT. So you oh, happen, yes. you happen, had to have the opportunity to write their debut uh, songs and everything like that. So how was that experience? You know, coming from working with an already established group to working with a new debut. You just have to think what really in my mind. I thought, what is going to differenti- differentiate these guys from the group that everybody knows from this record label. What is going to make them feel, sound, and look special? And so that was what was going through my mind the entire time I was co-writing Crown for TXT. I was just like, I just want to make sure that you cannot say, oh, that just sounds like BTS. Right. You know what I mean? That's my that was my number one thing. And I feel like we accomplished that. I feel like in all of the songs we've done for TXT, my my one of my main concerns is going i don't want this to sound like something i would do for the guys at bts this isn't something i i want these boys to really shine because they are so amazing they're Mm. not just trainees they're not they say they're like they're the rookie band but to me they're not rookies like these guys have been training for so long so yes i just wanted to do i just wanted to make sure my contributions help establish an identity you know great great wow that's nice um, yeah. I, I will say this with having such a long career, um, has, I guess how drastically has your style changed from when you first started writing to where you Ooh. are now? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, it's changed so much because the styles of music have changed yeah. so much. When I first really put my heart and soul into songwriting, what was big at the time? Like Skrillex, Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, yeah. Zed clarity mm-hmm. and when you look back at those kind of songs and now what's happening on the radio now so different so yeah. i had to sort of like finagle my <laughs> style to match and what's really i i call myself like a, a lyrical chameleon i just feel like okay. i i am lucky in the fact that i have never found it hard to assimilate into different styles of music so my style has changed a lot I was doing these like EDM like fist bumpers mm. a lot. And I thought that's all the radio was going to have for like a decade. And then just like that, it switched. So I just kind of had to like switch it up. But my style has changed a lot. I'm much more concerned with melodies, mm. much less concerned about titles. Mm. Back then, it was like all about like the title, like yeah. weird titles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Now it's more like, you want to know what really changed that though, I think, was Justin Bieber came out with Sorry. Mm-hmm. Julia Michaels and I think Justin Tranter wrote that one for with him. And I was just like, wow, you came out with a song named Sorry. That's so basic. And then when you listen to it, you're like, wow. That's, that's true. So yeah. Yeah. Is it too late now to say sorry? Because I'm missing more than your body. Like, that's <laughs> a heartfelt lyric right there. So I feel like he... What, and, and also, like, what do you mean? When he came out with what yeah. do you mean, it was, like, just yeah. very simple titles ha- started to make a comeback. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He Whereas, caught a lot like, of flag for that song. 2011, too. you want to write, like, Jetpack Supernova. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. 
People aren't really like. doing that anymore. <laughs> okay, uh, I know um, that you've worked with uh, Yolen before. Uh, ha- did you get a chance to actually work with her, like in the actual studio, or was that just kind of like uh, in the studio when you had to send a track over to her? Oh, say that again. You you cut out for like one second. No, I, I know you had did a song. You did a song with uh, Yolen. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Did you actually get to work like, with her in the friend. studio or? <laughs> I did work with her in the studio. Okay. Hyorin is... I said it all wrong. <laughs> her, well, I mean, it's, it, people call her Hyolin, yeah. Hyolin, Hyorin, Hyorin. I call her Hyorin. Mm. That's what her, That's what I hear her manager calling her. So okay. I'm just like, I'm going to copy that. I feel you on that. Um, so will we. So, uh, yes, we've been in the studio with her. We've been in the studio with her in Korea as well as in LA. Mm. Uh, wow. She is probably one of the best female singers i've ever like stood next to in my life she's mm. the the korean mariah she's the Cor- korean ariana um mm. she also is an amazing melody writer mm-hmm. when we write and she produces by the way she runs oh, like I she didn't know runs that. Wow. her own dog oh yeah she records herself she produces her vocals she is just like a very swiss army artist she does everything mm. It, and oh, has there her. anything that you like when y'all recorded the song? Was there anything that you tested her to do that she actually couldn't do? Because she seems no. like a super amazing when you listen to her vocally. <laughs> yeah. There is nothing, and uh, even though her English, which she will admit is not the best, mm. um, when she sings in English, mm. she doesn't even have an accent. She copies the English, like I don't know the like, but pronunciation. The dialect, so the dialect well, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's like what. How do you not speak English? It sounds like you just sung this whole thing and meant every word. You know what I mean? (laughs) But then she'll usually take the song home that we do in English Mm. and she'll re lyric it herself into Korean. Oh, wow. You know, so she can feel it. And so her fans who are like, you know, over there in Korea can also feel it too. Mm. Nice. Yeah, she's Um, dope. Like, like, high key, like, want her to do an English album. That's what's up. I'll be open. I'll yeah, be up me for too. That. I'll be up for that. Hundred percent. God, I love her. So uh, you also so you worked with uh, Everglow, and uh, I did. We yes. actually just went to see Everglow in concert a couple a couple weeks ago. It was great. You made it before they canceled all the yes. shows. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we made it. So, how was that um, experience, and how did that come about? Well, I have a great friend um, who is he's a he's American, but he lives in Korea and has lived there for quite some time. And he is a producer and songwriter, and he was helping to um, put together the first Everglow um, package, basically. And he was searching for songs, and so I went into the studio with my hubs and our really good friend named Yurik. Um, he's this incredible, talented producer from Finland, actually. He's like the Max Martin of Finland. He's awesome. Oh, wow. He wow. was here in LA visiting and working. Okay. And we just, the three of us, like, went in the studio and we just were like, what would a brand new girl group that's never been heard by anybody, how can we kick every debut's ass ever mm. with a song? And that's when we wrote Bomb Bomb Chocolate. Ooh, nice. <laughs> nice. Which was originally titled Everything. Oh, wow. As you can hear, like, everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Everything. So that was the original title. Uh, but they changed it to Bomb Bomb Chocolate. Go up to the sky. Did you write Hush in the same session? And fun fact that na 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 my husband wrote that in the shower. Oh, that's what's up. See, we be talking about that singing in the shower. Bring the best ideas up. Come on. I write a lot of my a lot of stuff. You would be surprised. I've written the chorus in the shower. I'm telling you, man. Theory coming true. Look at that. Did, yep. did you do Hush Screw. in the same uh, studio session that you did uh, Bun Bun Chocolate? No. Actually, we did Hush with a, another great friend of mine named Lena Leon. Okay. Uh, we wrote that just separately. Um, the original title was Not Know You, and it was basically like, I wish I could just not know you. That way we could meet again and like re-fall in love. Mm. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, yeah. it is. <laughs> So we just wrote that. We were writing for Pitch for like a Western artist. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when it was done, we were like, this actually sounds like it could be amazing for Everglow. I wonder what it would sound like with a Korean uh, reinterpretation. Mm -hmm. So we sent it over again to my good friend over in Korea. And he was like, oh, wow. 
like this could be great mm. and that's how hush happened <laughs> that's, that's nice dope. that's dope we, a lot of stuff happens where we write it first and send it out and see what people say so we call those pitch sessions because you're just pitching you know mm, okay and that's dope that's too because you're not actually getting too invested on the lyrics having to sound like that yeah yeah, yeah. exactly so we're like very up open for changes and open for interpretation so when we did hush it was we were very very open to changes nice yeah, once again amazing questions by you guys uh, <laughs> This one's not going to be as. <laughs> this is not going to be as amazing. Um, so, is there like a dish uh, in Korea that you probably had that was like, man, now I can't live without? Have you had like anything uh, like that? That's a good question. Yeah. I, I like, like that. It. That's yeah. good. <laughs> and you're going to think this is the most basic answer, but have any of you guys been to Korea? No. no. Okay, so you have not had fried chicken yet, then. Mm. Oh, you just haven't. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. I know you're it's from like that? Atlanta. You're from the South. <laughs> but you, I'm sorry. And, and all my Southern relatives in Alabama are going to be like, shut up. But <laughs> you have not eaten fried chicken until you have gone to Seoul. Really? It is the best. It's like, it's like light, but like also so crunchy. There's no like extra like fat dripping. It's just the most it's the most perfect fried chicken you've ever had in your life hmm. ever wow i don't know and it's also it's the chicken too so it's not just the breading it's these korean chickens whatever they feed them they must just be eating a diet of butter because <laughs> just like, no matter what part you know like sometimes the breast can be a little dry yeah. it just is perfectly texture moisture chicken heaven that was cool yep. <laughs> i believe it because you're describing it you perfectly i was good when the whole virus thing comes down like i'm looking forward to traveling and writing again going back to seoul and eating fried chicken <laughs> man <laughs> nice oh, that's motivation right there all right <laughs> uh, there's, uh, there's two things i'm very passionate about outside of music food and home decor and you caught food, so ask me about Wayfair in five minutes. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you my home tour. <laughs> so uh, you've worked with my Ultimate Bias group twice. Mm. <laughs> so uh, did you actually get a chance to work with them in person? And uh, do you have a bias in the group? I don't. I'm not. I'm not allowed to tell you my. <laughs> I'm trying to write for them again. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I, I've been a fan of Twice. Um, my favorite Twice song is Heart Shaker. Obsessed. Oh, wow. um, okay. I know it's like. <sighs> so, uh, no, unfortunately, I did not get to work with them in the room. I mm. never got to meet Twice, but I have a few friends that met them that said they are absolutely wonderful, amazing it. girls. I believe it too. Yeah. I believe it. I believe it. But I did again. I wrote. I wrote um, the song. Uh, trick it uh -huh. with a great friend of mine and my friend from Finland again, Yurik. Okay, nice. Songwriting is very collaborative. Like I don't really have a big social life <laughs> just because I spend all my time in the studio. Uh -huh. So for me, my writing collaborations is how I socialize. Nice. So nice. You know, I try if I'm going into a session with somebody and I'm like, oh, you know, it would be fun to hang out with so and so today. They'd be good in this session, and I just bring them in. Yeah, that'd be mm. nice. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. since we're on the subject of groups, you know, the K-pop industry excels when it comes to putting together groups. In the U.S., though, it hasn't been that much success. So, oh, yeah. with the increased success of, like, K-pop groups, do you think that labels in the West will try to emulate, you know, groups and everything again in the future? Or you think it's just yes. going to stay the same? I do. I think what what's funny is back maybe, like, 10 years ago, you know, Western um, labels and Western producers and writers were all like, yeah, Korea copies us. Oh, wow. But funny <laughs> how the tables have turned, buddy. Uh, we, I'm now getting briefs from uh, American and like English and European record labels using songs I've written, co-written for Korean artists as the brief. Mm -hmm. So... I do believe there will be a resurgence of groups very soon. Uh, there, I know there's a couple of groups coming together. There's one amazing girl group coming together here in the West that I'm working on. I'll tell you more about Ooh, it when they're there. Okay, okay. When they start popping. 
but yeah, people are putting labels and, and, uh, and managers are starting to hunt and seek out members for groups because I think that's sort of the next wave. Music is cyclical, you know, it's sort of like solo artists, then like, bands then boy bands like if you want to like think back what was it like new kids on the block oh yeah uh then like joe to see and then like it was like groups and then it was solo artists like just ricky martin just j-lo just britney yeah, just Justin christina Timberlake. but then in between then there was the right before that there was the backstreet boys but then after that it was like a rock era. So we are kind of just like going in cycles of that makes sense. music right now. Right. It always is cyclical. So we haven't had a really good boy band since One Direction. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. Five, yeah, five seconds of summer, but five seconds of summer, they play instruments. That I don't consider that a boy band. They're mm, a they're band band. band. They're you know band. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So you might want to just because they are tied into One Direction and like management or some some way people want to call them a boy band but they're not at all mm. so it's been about it's coming up on like 10 years so yeah. we're, we're gonna start seeing these bands pop up again we got pretty much already kind of bubbling um why don't we bubbling you know they're like on the verge of blowing uh but yeah I think the west is following the east we always have in time zones and then. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, I kind of want to piggyback on that because um, I think we went through a big era when it came to the bands like with the uh, Backstreet and Sync and things like that. Is there any like, do you find like any comparisons with those eras to what we're doing, seeing with like K-pop groups like BTS and things? Like that? Oh, yes. It's the outfits. It's the big choreography. It's the big budget music videos. It's all back. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's all back. Nice. Mm. So is there anybody that you're uh, working with right now that you could actually talk to us about? <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I can talk to you about who I'm working with now. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Nice. <laughs> so, so what am I working on right right now that I'm super excited about? Let me start thinking. i um, been working a lot with an artist called Death by Romy. Mm. Uh, mm. She's just a beast, a great songwriter. You know, her music is super unique. It's mm. like a blend of like, I don't know, if like Post Malone and Marilyn Manson oh, had okay. a daughter. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's going to stand like, out. Should, should check her out. What else am I working on these days? I mean, the Dua Lipa album just came out. So yeah, that's you did a song for so that. Exciting. Yeah, I saw that's that. Like I listened the to the song. My labor is just kind of the seed was planted now that the tree has grown and nice, blossomed. Nice. Um, when you hear I'm these so songs grateful. that you've written, do you, like first time on a radio do you ever get over that feeling that you probably felt the first time you heard one of your songs playing? Never. It's, mm. it's a, it's, that's one of those feelings. Like when you asked me that first question, like what, what do you do it for? Mm. You know, what is the reason, like the reaction of the fans, but it's also that feeling of knowing that it's like stepping back. You just painted something. It's like stepping back and seeing the final picture and you just feel like, <sighs> it's the sigh of relief. Like, okay, I did something right. It's done. <laughs> right. Nice. Yeah. Oh, oh, um, who else am I working with? <laughs> working with AJ Mitchell right now. Love me some AJ Mitchell. Okay. He's bomb. We have some songs um in the holster. Nice. Uh, what else? <laughs> so much, but why can't I think of anything at this very second? So whenever <laughs> someone asks you, like, what you what you up to? You're like, I understand. Uh, yeah. Me every How day. was school? Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a couple uh -huh. people to ask you how, how you would feel about actually working with. Uh, Ailey, IU, and CL. Oh, Ailey? I have a I had a song on her last, or two songs on her, her last uh, release. Really? Really? I actually have that yeah. album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah nice. It's good. Oh. Um, let's see. And CL. I have written with CL in the past. Oh. Uh, I have a crazy hilarious cl story we were in the studio uh here in la working with uh, a producer friend of mine and we were just coming up with stuff and then randomly out of nowhere will i am just comes in the room oh, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> and how did I you mean, react to that the session kind of like paused at that moment for a while because he was just telling us stories of like being on the road with Black Eyed Peas before Fergie joined and like telling us all yeah. these tour stories. And we were just like with stories about engineer, how he, you know, how he likes to engineer his vocals and like his production. And we were just kind of all sat there like, 
<laughs> but Will, by the way, Will, Will was kind of like a, he was like an early investor in K-pop. Like he mm. has mm. been on that like Korean fashion, like Korean mm-hmm. sound for a long, long time. And he's been a fan of K-pop for a long time too. And I think he's been a fan of CL for a while as well, since she was in 21. Mm. Okay. I absolutely love CL. We were, we had some laughs. We wrote some cool ideas. I don't think anything ever came out. I think she was like, just like in the very, uh, what is the word? She was like, just in like the sort of discovery phase of uh, writing her new album. Okay. Okay. So uh, what about IU? IU? How am I not familiar? I don't, I think I'm familiar with them. Okay. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, it's a it's a female solo artist from yeah. uh, from Korea, and she's she's really I really do. amazing. From from everything we've heard, she's kind of like the Beyonce of K-pop. Give me all the. Let me spell that for me. Look at me, Google. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just I U. The letter look I. Up, the letter look U. up uh, Blooming. I yeah, U she has Blooming. a song called Blooming. It's kind of like a kind of like poppy rock song. Yeah. Mm. i have seen her yup but i've not worked with her because i think your writing style would be really interesting working with somebody like her yeah she's got the blue hair she's beautiful oh she's adorable how have i never heard of this person what is wrong with me (laughs) it's okay it's all good it's all good I'm still discovering artists all the time too. Where I'm like, what? How have I not heard of that person? What? Yeah, we are every yeah every, every day, day. It's, every it's day. Every <laughs> well, that being said, then call me on you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I guess since we're talking about K-pop, out of all the songs that you've had the opportunities, might be a loaded question, but just take it. What was the most challenging to work on, and why? Mm. What was the most challenging to work on? Well, it's not it's not out yet. Oh. Um I can't tell I can't tell you who. Okay. But it was ask me in like I don't know, maybe like three weeks. Uh <laughs> okay, okay. up until that point. Up until that point. Let me see. What was the most challenging song I ever worked on in K pop? I mean, Bon Bon Chuck a lot was like, we did a lot of changes. We did a lot of edits after the fact okay. um, to make it perfect. Mm. So mm. I wouldn't say it was like difficult, like, oh, this sucks. But it was just like, there was a lot of rewriting, a lot of melody moving and stuff like that. Okay. Let me let me take a crack at guessing that, that artist that you, you were about to say that you said X in three weeks. Because I remember you saying in the interview that you wanted to work with Blackpink. So... Uh. <laughs> Could it possibly be a song written for Blackpink? Oh, <laughs> can't say nothing. I can't say anything. What if it is? Okay. Hey, the one thing also that I love about Korean music, and just additionally, is there's the element of surprise. Yes, yeah. so, I agree oh, with yeah. that wholeheartedly. I'm like sworn to secrecy so that y'all can be like shocked when it happens. You know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're always shocked when we hear these records because it's like we never know what to expect going into it. Never. You yeah. know, it's like it's it's. I love American music, but when I listen to it, I kind of know what to expect from the general artists that I'm listening to. Most people Good don't point. stray too much out of their sound because their fan base, you know, in America is like people will ostracize you for changing too much. Yeah. But in in Korea, it just seems like people will just go completely left field, and all the fans will just be like, "Whoa!" Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep, and that's what that, like that's what happened with BTS with On. Mm-hmm. Like after yeah. boy with, after the boy with love and I was Make not it expecting right that. Phase, I was not you, expecting yeah. that. It was amazing. That that yeah. caught me off guard. Of a darker moment. I feel like I feel like that's what that's why they swear people like me to total secrecy so that that moment is as special for everyone because if I go and say something then it could ruin it for like thousands right. of people, millions right. actually yeah, millions, of people. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so I got to take it real seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, then uh, I guess my question would be like, I can imagine like this can be like a stressful um, your your career. For me, when I get stressed out, I play video games. Um, one game I'm pretty good at is Tetris. Yep. Is there a, a stress relieving video game that you play if you like? You know what? Or oh, just yeah. anything. 
Mario Party. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. All right. That's a good one. That's That's what's up? I'll be crapping on that Mario game. Mario Party. It. I love that game. <laughs> I can't, it's just, it's so fun when you have like a few people over mm-hmm. and like you do the partner party. So like, oh, you yeah. team up with somebody and then y'all are a team and then like your friends are a team. Oh my gosh. I love it. Yeah. I'm always, um, <laughs> who am I? I'm Princess Peach okay. or Bowser. Bowser. Mm-hmm. That's his that's person. his that's his <laughs> guy. Oh man. Yeah. Bowser has guy. the nine die. Bowser has the nine. Yeah. You know, you, I mean he does have two like negative two coins or something, but I always roll the high for some reason I'm always able to roll the high number with Bowser. Totally worth it. <laughs> I did the math. That's like one of the best blocks. <laughs> I have a good friend I have a good friend of mine. We put, we used to play uh well we we used to be used to acting like we used to well once in a while we would play mario party together and he would always say fortune favors the bold baby <laughs> <laughs> I, I have some fortune questions here from uh, i have some questions here from some of our uh fans in discord and uh they oh, were, awesome and um so they were asking some of these you kind of answered so i guess i'll just try to ask them in different ways uh but um cool. someone's asking uh uh, how do you decide which artists to give a song to? I mean, you kind of just um, mentioned that you don't really get to well, that for the there's, most part. there's a bunch of different ways. You can write it specifically for that artist mm. and send it directly to their management or their A&R at their record label. Or you can just write. Sometimes I just say, hey, guys, can we just write like a great pop song and just see what we feel in the end? Mm. I think that sometimes it doesn't box you in as much. So there's like multiple ways of doing it. So it's either, it's one of two of three, four or five different kind of ways you can go about getting it to someone. Or if you have a personal relationship with the artist, you can just say, Hey, what do you think of this? Like I wrote this with, you know, with like you in the back of my mind, you know? Yeah, And that pretty much answered every question that followed that question. Okay, shout from out. That one person. <laughs> that was, that was very in depth. <laughs> and uh, so another one is, well, I'm glad I could help. <laughs> So another one is, is and you kind of talked about this a little bit already too, but when you write a song, uh, they were wondering how much from the original will the final version be? Like, I'm pretty sure it is varied, right? Yeah, it varies per song. So um, like on a song like Boy With Love that I wrote with BTS very collaboratively over like the internet, mm-hmm. obviously, um, they kept most of my melodies mm-hmm. um, like on the chorus. Um, and very few, uh, very few of my lyrics like, uh, got left behind because, you know, they write all their own lyrics, but it just varies from song to song. And then a song like Bon Bon Chocolat for Everglow, mm. they kept a lot of my English and they kept some of my background vocals that were in English too. Nice. Uh, oh, nice. so it, just, it really varies, but like, um, yeah, on some of the, the, bts stuff they also they do keep something they did keep some of my english and on as well yeah so it just varies from song to song but a lot of times it's mainly my melodies that they keep Mm. you know so i would like i would just like i do not speak korean i can't speak korean i wish i could um but they will keep some lyrics like a baby like hey baby or like um the oh my 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 which all the fans love to just a dog on me about like, some of the angry fans. Like, you only wrote Oh My My My. I'm like, yeah, I did write Oh My My My, but I also co wrote the melodies that come mm-hmm. after that and before that. And the melodies are extremely so, important. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's Cause the I catch part my that singing that all the time. Oh, yeah. that oh, hook onto on the side. <laughs> you got me high so fast. What was it? You got me high so fast, and I'm coming back a boy with love. That was my original. Thing and they changed it to EJ Togim and the I guess or and that's you know? the same oh, melody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People that's don't the understand. That's the same exact that's melody. Process. It's just the words yeah. change. Yep. But they have to, you know. They BTS is so true to themselves and so true to their fans, which is why so many people love them. Is this authenticity that they have? Mm. They're not afraid of anything. They're mm. not afraid. They're not afraid to have their own makeup line. They're not afraid to give a more feminine thing. And then they're also not afraid to like RM can wrap most people in the U.S. under the table. Mm. Oh yeah. So. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's like they're they're just fearless with their with what they want to be, and that's why it's not a problem when they get rid of my English lyrics and put their own twist on it because it's them. 
Yeah. It's their, it's what's in their heart. And they're the artists. They are the ones that have to sing this every day, day and night. So yeah. right. thank you. Right. I'm, here, I'm here to just help with the melodies. I'm, I'm so grateful. They come to, to me and my husband to, to help on the melodies. Mm. Um, I say the melodies because that's basically mostly what we do. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Very important. And the yeah. last question from, uh, from discord is, uh, who do you want to work with next? Oh, <laughs> I want to work with next? Well, in the West, I would love to work with Ariana Grande. Mm. I love her. Oh, yeah. I love her voice. Her I love her style. Her last two She's albums beautiful. have been completely amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yes. I'd also love to work with SZA one day, too. Okay. I just love All her. Right. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, uh, who else would I love to work with? Um, in As far as in Korea, mm. uh, I would love to work with more like up and coming brand new like debut acts mm -hmm. i would love to work with ichi i love ichi okay dala dala <laughs> oh, okay I yeah i know, okay. no, I, know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I had to take it back that's that's my group yeah. okay yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and kind of more and kind of well i actually was i had a really fun uh moment we were flying home from seoul uh like two months ago and we're at the airport in Korea, and we see these black vans pulling up, and we see like just gaggles of paparazzi, like just swarming the van. And it's Ichi, and they're flying to LA. They were on our flight. Oh, nice. Wow. <laughs> so I got to fly with Ichi, and they, every time they walk, I would, like by, use the rest of them. I was like, "This is so." If I was you, I would have dropped my uh my note, my phone with, with some lyrics in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> oops. I was like, oops. Yeah there, you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Here's your next single. But I, uh, I just, I love them so much, and I would love to write with them or for them one day. Nice, nice. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, you got any more questions? Oh, All yeah, right. So I guess I can wrap it up with this. Um, so cool. since working with the, you know, Korean industry, how does, how has, you know, your work infected your personal and your professional career? Mm. I'm definitely sleeping less. Uh, <laughs> when I'm sleeping, Korea's awake. Yeah. So I have to get stuff done sometimes and do quick edits. And that sometimes means a late night writing session or like a going back into the studio after you shut down at like three in the morning mm, wow. <laughs> to get wow. files to send off. So uh, I definitely sleep less since working in Korea, but it's, super satisfying and fulfilling so i don't even mind nice. yeah. i did i did have one final question though so um sure so i know like at least around here you know you drive around you can hear boy with love coming from cars you can hear on coming from cars and everything like that walking around somebody might be on their headphones singing your melodies and everything like that you know do you ever get a chance to like take time to sit back because i know you said you work a lot so do you ever get a chance to sit back and just look at all of the songs, all of the things you've achieved, and just get to think like, man, this this is crazy. Like I actually had played a part in that. Yeah. Once in a while I'll just like when I'm not in the studio or when I'm just like getting ready in the morning, I'll just be like, damn, I'm kinda living my dream. That's dope. <laughs> that's nice. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. Most definitely. I do. I'm so grateful. It's I don't take it lightly. I don't take my relationships with the writers. I don't take my relationships with the artists, you know, lightly. I, I, I love these people and I appreciate them so much. You know, the late from everybody, every single A and R, at the you know Korean label, at Big Hit, at you know SM, at anywhere I've I've worked at Cube. You know, I I really really highly respect everybody's workflow and I respect everybody's you know hard work. So it's I'm just I'm always with a very grateful heart, you know? Yeah, that was so dope, That's man. That's dope. Man, thank you so much, Melody, for doing this thank interview with us. <laughs> we really appreciate it. We, we're not writing hit records out here. <laughs> not <laughs> even a little bit. <laughs> not even a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but so many, I mean, you're in the land of, like, all the hits, though. Like, Atlanta, for a while, was, like, 
LA. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. it's kind of it's kind of slowly kinda creeping good. that back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's it's kind of cool too because yeah, all the K-pop artists stuff. are stopping through here for all of their tours. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, because yeah. we're supposed to be going to the ATs concert, but that's been postponed. We we're going. Oh, well, no. I was going to the BTS concert, yeah. but that's just postponed. Uh, everything. That yeah. That's gonna happen though. They didn't cancel. They yeah, pushed, yeah. They pushed. Which yeah, I they love. pushed. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. the ATs concert didn't get canceled either. It just got pushed, but. Yeah. We got to see Everglow this year. Yeah. We got to oh. see who else we saw to somebody else this year. Um uh, Super M. Super M. Oh yeah, we got that, that was, was last, last year. year. That was last, last year. Oh, we yeah, saw Super right. M. Did you guys get get out and see uh was did Eric Nam come to Yes he did, yes. but we didn't, we, we didn't missed, get a chance yeah. to see oh, it. We missed yeah. It. Yeah. I'm such I had a session booked with him and of course mm. oh. stupid coronavirus. Oh. <laughs> oh and we missed the oh. Stray Kids concert too. Yep, oh. it was Stray Kids. I think I think it's all happening for a reason. Mm. We're we're recharging. The industry is recharging right now. The Earth is on her dock. Earth is, <laughs> yes. Earth is on the charger right now. Because mm. I feel like we were really draining her for a really long time. And I don't think we like. I just love people like we deserve this. I'm like, no, we don't deserve this, but we need this. We need this break. Like we needed a forced vacation. Yeah. yeah. And I know it's so horrible for so many people who. Um, work jobs that are necessary Mm -hmm. um but if you like zoom out like if you just zoom out instead of zoom in on like the bad Mm -hmm. you see like the earth is healing herself Mm -hmm. and everybody's i think we're gonna all get through this there's no Mm -hmm. way we're not gonna all get through this i have so much faith in us as humanity Mm -hmm. yeah we've gotten through a lot of bad shit (laughs) yeah yeah. i see nature's kind of going back to normal there's sea otters coming kind of coming back they said there's um, actual birds swimming in like some of the places in Italy where boats always go yeah, by. There's that, dolphins yeah. coming yeah, closer my, to the shore. My main concern is like for kids that like rely on free lunches at school. Yeah. yeah. Um, my main concern is for families that can't afford childcare, but the parents still work like one of the necessary jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, what do they call that? What is it? The, the, the terminology essential, essential. essential jobs. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, there's like all these charities you can donate to we, me and we've been donating to, I think feeding America. Nice. John legend was talking about that the other day. He was, he's donated a big chunk of money to feeding America. And I, I donated a little bit and I was like spreading it on like Facebook and Twitter. You just do what you can, you know, donate to the humane societies. Cause all the animals aren't being cared for right now. Like just like once or twice a day, someone's coming in to feed them and the shelters are full. So yeah, yeah. I just feel like right now is our opportunity as like humans to just like observe humanity and respect it. And people who can give need to s- stop being greedy and give. Mm-hmm. And those that need, need to not be proud and just like take what they need, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Most of the facts. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to tell people where they can find you at? Yes. Please search me on Instagram at Melanie Joy Fontana. That's M E L A N I E J O Y. F O N T A N A. And then on Twitter, I'm at Melanie Fontana, just plain Melanie Fontana. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, just find me there. I'm not like a, I don't have like a YouTube or anything, but yeah. <laughs> Instagram and Twitter, that's, that's where I live. <laughs> One more question. Do you have any more music from you coming out anytime soon? Yes. Ooh. Um, yes. Uh, I do have a couple little features coming out. I know I recently had a feature with the DJ duo Arm and yeah, Hammer. I heard that. I yeah. wrote a song. I wrote a song with my husband actually called Forever Young. Hmm. And I was the featured vocalist on it. And then I will have a couple songs coming out with some DJs, but nothing is totally confirmed yet. Okay. So I don't want to get hopes up. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so I'll let you guys know. Okay. Oh. I'll let you guys know. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Man, so Thank you guys for watching this interview, man. We got to thank Melanie for coming through yes. and doing the interview. Yes, appreciate Hopefully it so next time we could do it in person if, uh, you know, yes. the world is in a different <laughs> space. Yeah, <laughs> yes. But um, I want to come back to Atlanta. I miss Atlanta. I haven't been to Atlanta in a while. It's been a while. I've never been to L.A., so. Never have. <laughs> really? No. Yes. Come to L.A. Come yeah, to L.A. We, okay. we need okay. to. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Atlanta, you gotta to come to LA. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> you, you been to LA? No, I haven't. You, you been to LA? Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I mean, it's a big old city. It's big. Like I'm, when I'm you scared go to LA, of the traffic. Like... <laughs> Atlanta traffic is just as bad. Oh, oh so really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've heard. I've heard LA is like ten times worse. It's like about the same. Like I've been at 
rush hour traffic in Atlanta. And it's been pretty bad. Like, it's bumper <laughs> to bumper. But LA moves. Like, Atlanta traffic stops and you sit. That is correct. You're right. About that. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> LA traffic sl- slinks along. Like, it, it, it's slow, but it's moving the whole time. You rarely ever, like, hit the brake and you're sitting and, like, park. In Atlanta, you, like, sit. Oh, you yeah. stuck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, y'all. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much for coming thank through. You. And uh, we'll, we'll see you guys next time. Soon. Yes, yes, for sure. Bye. <laughs> <Cool>. Bye. <laughs>